let's take a look at methods. All right, welcome back to the Java introduction for Minecraft and Hightail modding. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at methods. Now, methods are a very uh, broad topic that is actually kind of important. And to actually understand methods, what we're going to do is we're going to go beyond this main method because this is also a method. And usually what we've done is we've written everything inside of these two curly brackets right here. And I have basically asked you to ignore all of the rest. And now what we're going to do is we're going to venture out into the unknown and we're going to write something into this main class here. We're not going to worry about what a class is just yet. That's something that comes in not too long, you know, time in a future tutorial, but for the time being methods. So if we want to do something, well, maybe multiple times, right? Maybe something is uh, always the same or maybe something uh, happens multiple times. So maybe what we have is hey, we want to output all of those things here, you know, maybe 10 times anywhere in different parts of the code. Of course, at this point, we only have, you know, our main method here, but you know, we could just copy this over or for the really smart people, they would be like, huh, couldn't we just put another for loop, you know, on top of this and then put this inside of the for loop? Yes, that would also work. However, we could make this a little bit more readable because if I had another for loop, which of course would, you know, with no issue. So let's just say, you know, int in x equals zero. This cannot be the same because we're going to put this for loop into this for loop. So we can't have the same number in there, but just, let's just say that for like five times for the sake of argument here, I uh, x plus plus, right? And then we're just going to put this for loop into this for loop. No issue whatsoever, right? Works and would work. Like if I were to do this, absolutely no issue. As you can see, it now outputs put everything five times. But let's be honest, it's not that readable. Right? Like when you look at it, it's like, okay, you're going to do five times and then you're going to oh, output the questions and answer. Okay, fair enough. What if there was a way to make this a little bit more readable? Well, here the methods come in. And so outside of the curly brackets here, we're going to write public static void. And then we're just going to say output questions and answers. Let's just say X times just because why not? And then we're going to put in parentheses and then curly brackets again. Now, first thing to take a look here, these two, we're not going to go too deep into it. These are the access modifiers. That is a future tutorial basically waiting to happen because access modifiers go, you know, are a little bit more interesting for the time being. We're just going to sort of, once again, every method that we write here in this file always has to be public static. That's okay. Then this one, is very interesting because this is the return type of this method. So we can return something when we call a method. Now, what's very interesting is we've actually seen this already when we used the string methods because those returned strings or when we've seen the math methods, they returned integers usually, or it could also return floats, of course. Now, a void simply means that this doesn't return anything. It just is called and then something happens. So now, we basically have the name of the method. This is a long name, but don't worry about it. Make your method names as long as they need to be to describe what they're doing. Now, this might be a little bit too long for this, but that's totally fine. Just make sure that the method name is descriptive enough that you can basically read what is happening there. And now interesting, we have the parentheses here with, and nothing in it. Now we're actually going to put something in it and that's going to be int x. And this would be the parameter. We can have multiple parameters. So I could, for example, make a float y in here, no issues whatsoever. And I could even make more, right? Th those can be any variables could be put in to here as parameters. And the entire thing, right? This entire thing basically is called the method signature, meaning that it is the access modifiers plus the return type plus the name of the method plus all of the parameters. Now those names, are they really important that you know, you know, each of those na names and the definitions? No, of course, not necessarily. However, it's always good to, you know, sort of approach this in this direction. Because if I then going to say, hey, the second parameter is wrong, then you need to know, okay, wait, what was this parameter? Oh, a parameter was something that I'm passing into a method or that is defined here in a method, right? So the print line method has one parameter here, right? We're passing in 
a, a string in this case. So that's sort of the idea. Now, output questions and answers x times, well, what I could do in theory is I could just take the entire d double thing, right? The d entire double, just put this in here. Now, first of all, we're going to be like, oh, this is red, this is red. Calm down. Everything's fine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this to y. And then how many times do I want to output this? Well, I want to output this x times. Okay, that's interesting. Now I'm going to have an x here. That's very interesting. Now, the next thing is that I don't have questions. I don't have answers. I don't have answers here. Mm, interesting. Well, maybe what we need then is we need these string arrays in here as well. That's not an issue at all, right? We can put in string array questions and string array once again called answers. And all of a sudden, all of our problems are gone. That's pretty cool. And now, what do you want to tell me? Well, now I can basically I'm going to copy this, or I can also just put in output, and you can see that it already suggests this. And I can say, I want to output this three times. Then I'm going to say comma, and then I'm going to put in the questions array, then I'm going to put in a comma, and I'll put it the answers array. And now as I can see, I don't have any more issues. And also, if you read this, output question and answers x times. It's like, oh yeah, so it's going to output those questions and those answers three times. Let's see if that works. And as you can see, let's see just for the sake of argument, how many states, how many states, how many states, and... There you go. That's that's it. It it output this three times. If I now change this to seven, for example, it is going to work. Right now, as you can see, um, we don't really need to count this. I'm like very very confident that this is going to work. And now this is way more readable than this, right? If we're really honest, right? Obviously. Then also the thing about it is that the naming of this x variable is this really the name of like you want to give it? Maybe not. So let's right click on this, refactor, rename, and then it's going to also change the names in every occurrence that happened there. So let's just say maybe like times, or you could call this um, amount of loops, even something like that, right? Or amount of outputs, that would work, right? Oh, outputs, wait a second, refactor, rename again, right? Not, not an issue, outputs, there you go. And now it actually has changed this up here as well. So. It isn't always generated, but it sometimes is auto generated by the uh, by IntelliJ. So you don't have to type this out here. This is the name here, of course. And you can see now if I were to read this, if I go into this program, I've never seen this code and I'll see output question and answers X times That's the amount of outputs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. It's probably going to loop through and then I could middle mouse button click on it, get to the actual method and see what it does. And you can see it's going to loop through number of times that this variable has, which we're going to pass in here. And then we also pass in the string um, arrays, questions and the answers. Now we can go a little bit deeper than this. We can say, well, I mean, you know, th this is all fine. This is all, all good. But what if we were to do another method that pr like just prints out one sort of set? So one, like the questions and answers one time would do this as well. There's two ways that we can do it. We can make another method here, or very interesting, we can select a particular piece of code, right click, I'm going to say refactor. And then you could have these like crazy things here, introduce variable, constant field parameter. And we have even have extract method. And we're going to click this extract method. And you can see what is happening here is absolutely crazy because it basically does almost everything for us. Uh, this we're going to just call output and uh, questions and answers, right? And then hit enter. Now, everything is done for us. The compiler or IntelliJ is smart enough to be like, wait, we need the array and the array here. That's totally fine. So we're going to generate the method completely normally. Uh, thank you very much. We don't need to change anything here for the time being. Now, it has made it private. We're not going to worry about this. We're just going to change it to public. Uh, th this is not strictly necessary. However, I don't want this to confuse you even further. This is for a later tutorial, not too long actually. But now we have the output questions and answers. And if we were to now go through this, we can say, okay, output question and answer x times. Okay, fair enough. This is the amount of outputs. This is the questions and the answers that it's going to output. And then we go in here and it's going to be like, oh, output questions and answers. Okay, fair enough. You yeah, know, it's going to output those questions and those answers. And then I can middle mouse button click on here. Now I'm already in there. So let's do this. And then it brings me to this method. And now we can see this. And this is sort of a way of doing this. This is something that is definitely, um, you're going to learn while you code on things, right? So out, you know, extracting methods, making methods, naming them, 
what are the right parameters. Those are all things that are going to come at some point, more or less naturally, uh, but it's going to take time. Like, that's just the, the reality of it. Now, overall, those methods are very interesting. I'm going to show one more example of a method because we've only been seeing these void here. So void basically always means that it doesn't return anything. Now, we could, for example, imagine a method that does something crazy, that returns an integer, and that sums up two integers. I know it's, it's pretty crazy. We're going to call the sum with int x and int y. And this, you will see here, is basically missing return statement. That simply means that we are not returning anything, so we have to, to type in return and then x plus y. So this is the thing that we're going to return, of course, the sum of x and y. And I can then call this, let's just say, for example, system out print line, and then we're just going to say sum. It already suggests it. And then just say 10 and 12, let's say. So we should get a, a 22 output here. So first of all, let's decrease this to like two. So we're not going to spam the, the actual uh, command line with too much stuff. And let's see, we then have 22 here at the end because this summation returns the x plus y. But this is, of course, a little bit of a crude example. It's kind of hard to, you know, get like uh, meaningful examples for the time being because we're going to have to build up a little bit more, you know, knowledge or around the side. But then as soon as that's done, man, we're going to be using methods nonstop. It's going to be great. And that's sort of the general idea. Sometimes it can be kind of hard. Okay, well, when would I use a method? Why? This is kind of weird. It's going to, I'm sure that it's all going to come together, especially when we continue with this, and especially in the exercise, because the exercise is going to be very interesting uh, in this time, because now we're really starting to get into a, I mean, I wouldn't say advanced necessarily, but in more advanced topics where there's a lot of different ways that you can go. In the beginning, we had integers, and we could plus and minus and times and divide, and that was pretty much it. And now we can really go, right? Think about this. You have every tool, right? This isn't sort of restricted to anything you have the if statements you have the switch statements you can use switch statements and loops and then you have an if statement in a loop that calls a method and so on and so forth so as you can see the complexity definitely doesn't go up linearly it actually like exponential complexity but that also enables you to do even more complex and cool stuff so that's sort of the idea here and for the time being this would be it um, sometimes methods can be a little more complicated. I wanted to show sort of a, well, semi-realistic example of where you had a very complex set of instructions, right, the double for loop, and you made it a little bit more readable. In this case, this isn't always the reason why you make a method. You could also make a method if you reuse certain parts of the code. So if you were to maybe think back of when we used a certain piece of code multiple times, maybe in the first exercise, you know, something like, you know, just taking a look at whether or not an answer is correct from the user, something like that, that a method really shines because usually if you use a piece of code like twice, eh, okay, fair enough. If you use it a third time, then it's, it's basically prime method making material, so to speak. But anyway, if any questions remain, feel free to ask in the comments below. I will try to answer them best of my abilities. Otherwise, it will be this for this tutorial right here. I genuinely hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.